back. We back at it again. Uh, uh, we got, uh, this is episode five, Cinco. We made it five deep. Um, and thank you for not canceling us. It's beautiful. Uh, appreciate it. We want to continue to 10, and then we can talk about it again. Um, Mo. Yes, my Hit friend. It. How you doing, man? How you doing? Um, why'd you pause between, like, how am I doing and man? Did you do, doubt it? Did you doubt that I'm a man? Well, no, you you got that swarthy beard today, so I think uh, there's really no doubt there, my friend. Funny story about this. I uh, went to uh, I got a bar. I went to a barber uh, close by to where I live, and uh, the barber was a half Greek half Israeli guy who was born in Iraq. Like, I was like, dude, you literally are the answer to what we need. Like you, you're like, you're like hopeful. And, and he was, he was a uh, part of the LGBTQ community. I'm like, you have it all in one. Oh, and he amazing. does great. And he does great uh, fades. He, he uh, does great and work. He my beard. Interestingly enough, did you know Abraham was from Iraq as well? So the, uh, he's in good company, your friend there, your barber. So that's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty. he is my friend now. Yeah, um, nice. He took my money, so he's my friend. Uh, what's uh, what's new with you, man? Not much. I'm just uh, thoroughly excited for for this episode, um, and we are going to have a guest joining us uh, very shortly. Um, and I can and I have to say that uh, hands down, by far, my favorite Persian comic on the face of the planet, present company included. Uh, is joining us today on this call, um, and uh, and here she comes up right now. You look upset. Why are you Why are you sad, Pesh? Come on, you know your own limitations, my friend. Why are we even having this conversation? I wanted to admit that she's the best Iranian comic, not you. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. All go. right. Fine. Bring her on. All right, Sarah Fatemi. Thank you for joining Hi. us. Hi. Thank you for having me. Wow, best Persian comic. You guys are too kind, honestly. Thank you. I appreciate that. Like knowing like there's all these amazing Persian comics out there that really warms my soul that you guys really think I'm funny. And I appreciate that. You two are my two favorite, two of my favorite Iranians in the diaspora. And Mo, your clothing company is unmatched. Thank you so much. Thank you. He's plugging it right now. He's always plugging it. It's it's great. He's uh, a, he's a, He's a walking promotion. No, mm-hmm. Sarah, you're you're not only are you uh, an amazing comic, you're the roast queen. Uh, Mo, if you ever are out here and you can go mm-hmm. see her one of her battles, I was lucky enough to see her win the championship. That was <laughs> wow. insane. Like, I was just like, dude, is this really like? I chose this one, like, and I and she ended up like killing it. It was amazing, and her opponent was a beast too. And it was like. Like just back and forth, like knockout blows, like and it was crazy. Um, <laughs> how how was that experience for you, sir? Let's start there. I know I'm I'm swerving you right now, but oh man, it was so cool. It was it was something I only dream of. So I started roast battle about five years ago, and then I've done you know obviously there was the pandemic in between. So I mean altogether, I've been doing it for a few years. I've done over thirty five battles. Um, it's something that like, it's funny too, because it was, uh, it was like full circle because I won the belt essentially the same weekend that I did my first battle and I was wearing green. It was, it's really weird. And I just, really, okay. See, yeah, yeah, I I never thought that I would actually have the, have the championship belt. And it's, it was such a cool experience. I did not expect to win because Kelsey Lane is such a beast She's so good. I mean, she defended her title multiple times. And so that was the fact that my jokes hit and the fact that I could win that and just have that on my resume forever was just, just something it's, it's something I, I consider that one of my biggest stand-up achievements. (laughs) I mean, listen, uh, it was epic to say the least. And I I was so proud to, to know you and and to witness that. Uh, I'm sure you, you know, so how you felt was pro- Trump's that by a mile. But um, so cool. Yeah, it was great. And then you were in London recently, right? Yeah. Back in May, I toured London. I did my first late night appearance. Uh, I was on NBC Persia. I did stand up comedy in Farsi for the first time. That oh, was wow. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got to hang out with Gul Shifta Farahani on set. 
uh yeah That's she's right. so sweet she's so cool and then I got to you know do shows in London every night and it was great and try British food and mm. it, was, it was awesome I'm sorry How's the audience shrewd that's terrible uh, yeah well okay fish and chips is actually a bomb um and yeah. their Indian food best ever really it makes sense yeah the best yeah. Indian food is in London <laughs> Mm. Okay. Uh, Not an yeah. Indian. I love it. No, right. <laughs> no. Go to East Brick Lane. It's 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 so good. Um, the crowds there, it depends. I would say so I did shows in a couple different places. I did them in Angel, in Vauxhall, and in South Kensington. And um Vauxhall, very uh rundown ghetto area. The the, mm. the audience was very uptight, I would say that. And then I realized most of them, when you did crowd work with them, they were all on a first date. And it's like, why would you, I just don't get why you would go to a comedy show on the first date. You can't talk to each other. Yeah. Like. That's true. Yeah. So it's like weird. taking a, t taking your first date to a movie. Exactly. It's, it's, like, it doesn't make sense. Idea. It's, then, it's a good safety if you're not very confident. I think that's, that's maybe a good thing, right? maybe i mean no? but you're gonna get don't talk on. to me i don't want to uh, get yes yeah no you you definitely don't want to get uh yeah you definitely don't want to get called yeah out. that's right yeah um, yeah, yeah but i true. did south kensington that's a very monarchist area they were they were decent but the best was an angel at the bill murray pub i did a roast battle there and i did uh the brown sauce show and that was that was awesome that was like uh, her, the girl who runs it, her name is Sharna. She's a Bangladeshi Canadian comic. And they basically like they feature brown comics. And a lot of the people in the audience were mm. white. And it was just such a cool show. It was it was awesome. It was packed. Every time you go into the Bill Murray pub, it's packed. The audience is just ready to laugh. They're really cool. It was, it was great. I loved I love and I would 100% go back. That's, That's really awesome. Cool. Mm -hmm. So is it, so Bill Murray pub, are we talking about the same Bill Murray or is this one of those British things where there's another Bill Murray that we should know about that we don't? Or is no, we talking Groundhog Bill Day Bill Murray? Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. it's really small. There's only one room and there's like a tiny bar next door in like the, um, what do they call it? Not the living room area, but you know, the entrance area. Oh, and there's right. an outdoor patio, but it's just, it's cool. It was a lot of fun. Nice. And that's, you know, I felt like I could like really talk to the comics and hang out and it was cool. It was great. <laughs> that that sounds like amazing. Uh, yeah. One day, one day I'll go. Yes, um, you should. But you should. I know I, I love it. I, I've been to London, but it was just on a connecting flight and it was for mm -hmm. 10 hours. And then we just left the airport and <laughs> and we were like, mm -hmm. my parents are hilarious because there's my mom is the most picky person mm -hmm. alive. Like with food, I'm like, mom, you're gonna hate everything here. <laughs> and then we went, and we went and got hamburgers from an Afghani store. Like I was like, how did we find that in ten hours, mind you? Like we had to like go, yeah, go and like look for that. And there was not Google yet. Like this was like pre Google. Oh so, my god. Uh, yeah, I mean British. It's there's some weird food. Like they have black pudding. It's like a I've heard of this. Of, yeah, it's made of pig's blood. Like what? Yeah. Why? I think I saw that on a Mr. Bean episode. Uh, no. It was like, yeah, yeah, it was very, yeah. Um, so Sarah, they went at other things. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Pesh. No, no, I was just saying Britain wins at other things, not not yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to hear. I want to hear about the Persian the Persian stand up. I saw I saw a clip of it right, and was yeah. in your story, so I, I I did see that. But yeah. how was that experience? Because uh, so it was, you know, it was, it was, it was really honestly nerve wracking. I, I usually don't get nervous for stand up anymore because I've just been doing it for so long. And, but they wanted, they wanted a few minutes of Farsi stand up. And it's like, well, first of all, this is a different language. You know, it's not my, I mean, it, I, I did learn it first, but I, I live in America. So English yeah. comes more naturally. Of course. So there's that there's, cultural and political references i mean there's certain things that you have to be careful if you still have family that lives in iran right. um and also the dirtiness and also like your aberu in general you know like yeah. you know you can't go on stage and talk about second day <laughs> um <laughs> they um they they you know they actually they were like can you can you say do you have anything to say about zan zendegi azadi woman life freedom 
uh, in the stand up. And I was like, oh my gosh, no. Like I, I just, at the time, I don't think I had enough. To, I mean, I'm sure there's things you could say about it, but to make it funny and to make it good and to make it not come off wrong. I just, yeah. I don't think I would have been able to do that, but I will say they cut my strongest joke because they thought it was, I think, inappropriate. So, so let me tell, let me tell you the original. Tell joke. it here. Yeah. Tell it here. Yes. Absolutely. So basically I say, uh, should I say it in Farsi or in English? I mean, yeah, say it in Farsi and we'll translate. Yeah. So, Mama Nam, uh, Estelahay Farsish, um, Gadimi Hastan. Yeah, Mama Nam, uh, Estelahay Farsi Gadimi is the Fadimi Quran. So, my mom uses a lot of old Farsi phrases. Bara Fars, Baski Mige, Mihad, uh, Baram Dori, as your jaw, Mige, uh, Mio Magabet, Migam, Magi Razmini Hasti. You know no. that comes from the stereotype. Yeah, yeah. The last getting fucked in the ass. How you get that stereotype is beyond me. Because, yeah. yeah. Um, and then <laughs> they're like, "Oh no, that's like racist. We can't say that." You know, it's like, I mean, I know Kazmin's yeah. not a race, but, and I get it. Okay. Yeah. And so, so the I issue can't... is the racism, not the homophobia. Is is what you're saying? That's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. And so, <laughs> hey, straight people can do that too. Don't discriminate. Yes. No, 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 no. But that's the that's the joke with Gazvinis is not that it's it's oh, just yeah. a propensity for sodomy. It's 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 basically oh. homophobia is where it comes from. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I didn't see. I didn't know that. See, so this yeah. is why it's it's uh, it, it was even more challenging. Um, I just uh, checked my algorithm and I think we gained two Gazvinis and lost the rest. So is this a live awesome. on Instagram too? <laughs> No, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, we need some Gazvini yeah. uh, representatives. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so I changed it last minute because this was on set. I was getting my makeup done. So I changed it last minute to like you first got to take me out to dinner. Oh, right. And they ended up, I think, just cutting the whole thing because I think they thought it was too risky. Though, if you do watch Sina Valley or Law, like the way he talks yeah. about. You know, I mean, if you've seen his monologues, the way he talks about, you know, Ahundo, Felon, you know, he he says some pretty, you know, raunchy stuff too. Yeah. But yeah. I get it. You know, I get it. Um, I will say, you know, a lot of the, the Farsi jokes that I did for the most part were kind of basic. It's not, they're not jokes that I necessarily would do in English. I did one that translated directly from English, but the other ones, they mm. were just more, you know, it was my first time doing it in Farsi. And like, you know, again, I mean, I, it's not to the point where I can do political jokes or, you know, yeah. very culturally relevant jokes. It's just not to that level yet, but it was a really cool experience. Um, and I'm really glad that I did it. And I got a lot yeah. of hate for what I wore. Um, Why? You know, Why? Because they were like, oh, you're like promoting prostitution. Like not they, not what? they at the show, but like the people in the comments, you know, because oh I was wearing a skirt that was kind of short. And, and ironically, ironically, it was women like secular women because I would see their profiles and they were the ones hating the most. And like the men were standing up for me and they're like, you know, mind your business. And well, they liked business. what they saw. That was the the, the men were enjoying. Uh, the, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. The whole well, situation, glad. and their wives were leaving nasty comments. That's what you saw. There. Literally, one of the comments was. was like, one of the comments was like, I was watching this with my husband, and then I had to change it because I there got. You go. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, Poor that's man. that's crazy. But it was um, overall a very cool experience. So, good. yeah. It's daunting it. though, right? Like I find, yeah, it's daunting the humor with the with the Iranians and and whatnot. I remember hosting a few um, concerts and that sort of thing, and it is it's hard to kind of hit with uh, mm -hmm. with a large Persian crowd, especially with the the different generations. You go a little bit older, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Like they are going to you know mm -hmm. uh, pitchforks off the stage if you kind of go a little bit too uh, a little bit too blue, right? Oh, you know, Sarah and I, yeah, we know well yeah. about Persian audiences. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> Artists. We love ever. them, but not, not You know, performing. I follow, though, I'm friends with a lot of stand-up comics in Iran, and one of the girls, she posted, I mean, she's very successful. She has a lot of followers, but she she has this joke where it's like, 
بچه ها من میخوام کلمه پ رو با د به جای اینکه مثلا کلمه چی whatever پ رو با د عوض شد and then she's like پول پول چرا فلان چرا پول همش تو دست زن است like it's literally a dick joke it, the yeah, whole set yeah. was a dick joke and i'm like yeah 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 so crazy that she's allowed to and you know that they don't you know so i think the new generation is really pushing and is just like doesn't give a shit good for them yeah. i love it yeah. i love it that's what we Arifa need Asgari um, is her name it's Arifa hmm. Asgari. Hmm. Oh, no. all right i'll have yeah, yeah i'll look her up um the uh it's 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 good that that's happening but also i think the the that, that regime is like they have very selective hearing they, they mm. choose when to care and choose when not to care so it's oh, almost yeah, like of course you know yeah. what i mean it's bullshit it's all it's have all you heard? Fake, obviously oh but have you heard some of the mullahs talking and we're talking about like you know it's it's on a friday it's a sermon or it's on a on a show on on tv mm -hmm. and this is on state media and they're talking about what underwear you should wear to to keep your husband interested and like what color it should it's like these guys are anything really goes in iran i'm i'm sometimes surprised about how much they talk about certain things so openly like it can be even describing how to arouse your 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 you know your man and how to do that. and it's like this 90 year old guy sitting on stage barely able to speak talking about how to kind of keep that marriage uh that marriage energy fresh which is a little i went bit... to an uh, i went to a sex shop in iran um one time what i mean all right well... that is this whole podcast is now shifted to this i need to hear about okay well it wasn't like a, it was more like a lingerie shop And it right. said, Agayun mamnu. So like men not allowed in the front. Yeah. And I went inside and like, there was like a sexy sailor outfit. And like, yeah. yeah. And um, it was just like lingerie. And I don't remember if I saw any sex toys in there. I don't think so. But um, um, yeah, it was... <laughs> I remember it's just random shops. I would go in like in like religious cities too. You'd go into random shops and there would be like the emblem of a Playboy bunny. Like I think they oh, don't uh... know what that means. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so we have a relative. We have a relative who bought um who bought a gift for someone else in the family. This gentleman is um I'm not gonna blast him here, but um <laughs> he works for a government ministry. And it's the government ministry responsible for, um, I think it was something to do with Islam, right? Like he works for, for them. Islamic um, guidance and culture, huh? I think, yeah, I think so. I think it is. Tabirat <laughs> Islami, yeah. And um, he, per he went away, he went on a, on a Hajj trip and he came back and he bought Playboy um, cologne for everybody. And I'm assuming that he has no idea what what this was you just thought hey it's a cute bunny let me let me, uh, let me buy <laughs> but so to funny. have this person go around and and he's a yeah um i haven't spoken to him in years but uh yeah it was, it was that Playboy, is so uh, funny Playboy, cologne yeah it's ridiculous. so you mentioned um you mentioned a <laughs> iranian stand-up uh comedian yeah. that, that uh, was a friend of yours and i know mm -hmm. that when it came to zanzendi gyozadi and what really kind of brought you um really out to the forefront really speaking up about this revolution was i think another comic in iran i remember you and i talked about this once offline um yeah. you want to talk to us about that for a bit because i know that was i think that was a, a that was a big thing for you it was a big moment for you and, and really kind of uh what you saw was happening with her and, and the situation yeah. it was you know um so I've been going to Iran every year of my life, except for the pandemic. And I was supposed to go to Iran, actually, last Christmas in 2022. And, you know, so every time there's a protest in Iran, I, I've actually been in Iran when there were protests in 2017, too. I actually went out with my cousin to see. And then I remember uh, because um, my um they were happening right in front of my grandmother's house in that particular city and we actually my cousin and I we went not to go protest but to go see and like I filmed a little mm -hmm. bit and like it was crazy to hear Natarsin Natarsin Mohammed Baham Hastin live wow. 
Mm -hmm. Like I remember my heart started beating really fast, but, and so obviously I didn't post anything then, but you know, even bloody November, the green movement, I would never post anything negative about Iran, about the Iranian government. Um, because I just, I love Iran so much. It's like the number one thing I look forward to every year. Uh, I have all my cousins there, my aunts, my uncle, my grandma, um, you know, it's just that feeling like it's always like a few weeks before you keep thinking about, you know, what you're going to do there and like just, just everything. It's just so fun. You know, it's 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 the family. I mean, you know, in Persian culture, family is so important. And I don't have family in the U.S. besides my parents and my sister. But, you know, that's mm. it's. Yeah. So when these protests started um, and then, you know, I was like, well, I, I don't know if I should say i mean i'm going to iran and then yeah. you know they lasted a few more weeks and you know parents were kind of like mm, you know not this year it's it's there a lot going on and they continued and i still didn't post anything because i'm like well i'll i'll get flagged i mean i have a little bit of a following um you know i, mm -hmm. I just don't want to end up in a list you know um because who knows if they're gonna go or not for real i mean this is a very brutal regime this is not I hate to say it, they're not going to go. It's not going to be easily easy to get rid of them. Um, and then in mid October, um, you know, I saw a post from another stand up comic that I'd been following for a long time that I've been in contact with that he posted that, you know, Zainab Musavi has been arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, they came into the house and they, you know, she, uh, she's in solitary confinement. And I, I, I looked and I saw no Iranian activist had posted about it or anything. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm the only one who kind of knows outside of um, mm. Iran. So I posted about it. And then it started spreading like wildfire in some American comics. Judd Apatow shared it. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, and then I was like, OK, so that's, you know, the, the thing about activism in Iran is it was it, it for me, it was very step by step by step going more and more into the gray area. Um, and I remember a month after that was, you know, we still had no luck in terms of the, you know, all the prisoners and such. And I was like, OK, well, maybe a podcast, you know, posting on social media, people might flip through it. You know, who can I talk to? So I emailed every famous stand-up comic in, L you know, in America and was like, can you talk about, oh, because here's another thing I thought. I was like, the way to f get as much attention possible is that we need to divide, not divide, sorry, um, specialize, make it personal. So a comedian got arrested. Let's reach out to comics. A rapper got arrested. Let's reach out to all the hip hop podcasts, which they were very hard to get a hold of. Um, you know, actors, reach out to actors. So you make it specific. That's kind of how you can garner attention that way. And so uh, Sarah Silverman and Mark Maron's teams responded and they you know, they, I was able to create a document for them about what's going on in Iran, the human rights abuses, Zainab's specific case, um, and how media campaigns are the only way to help people in Iran, because you can't donate money, you can't boycott. Um, and yeah, they, the, you know, the media campaign ended up, you know, being able to release her. Um, and then That's after that, it was even more gray area. And then it was like, I did this stand up comedy show, uh, my girls, my Syrian American comic friends, Lynn Mala and Gina, Gina Jones, they have a pr uh, production called uh, hilarious Habibis, and they did a fundraiser for Center for Human Rights. So and this was all in December. So it more and more went more into the gray area. And I had a breakdown, I remember you know, like a really, really bad mental and emotional breakdown. Cause I'm like, after all this, can I go back to Iran, you know? And then kind of the NBC Persia thing, I guess was the nail in the coffin. Cause I was like, I feel like I'm gray area to the point. Cause I don't know, but yeah, I mean. Did, did it, did, did, um, did, did this journey and this process, like obviously the breakdown you had, you just mentioned, regarding going to Iran, but what about your like own comedy? Like, did it make it like super difficult or how did it, how did it affect um, you? Um, 
to yeah, like go up on stage here. Yeah, I would say it affected here. me. I would say it affected yeah. me. I because I also talked about Zainab's case on stage as well after uh -huh. after I was done with my set. I mean, as far as my <laughs> regular set goes, I was just doing my regular set. I was not in a yeah. place to write about that. Um, just because. Yeah. I mean, I, props to the Iranian comics who could, but for me, it was very difficult. You know, I was also working a, a job that was so soul sucking and like boring. And it's like every time I would have a break, I would go on Instagram and see our people getting massacred. Like that's my break, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, as far as stand up goes, I really just got on and did the material that I had. Uh, yeah. roast battle. I remember I had a roast battle back in November. That was actually the championship, not championship. It was a tournament, an eight person tournament. And I lost to someone that a lot of people actually expected me not to. It's not that my jokes were mm. bad, but I remember mm. writing for that roast battle was so hard because I just, mm -hmm. my heart was absolutely not in it. And I was just such in such a bad place. I actually turned to weed a lot. Like, yeah. you know, it, I was I was coping definitely um, not not to say that weed is so unhealthy. I mean, it's legal. It's fine. <laughs> but I was just doing it like every night just to just to like not be here anymore. I was like, I don't want to yeah. think about this. And yeah, so I, yeah. I would just. Yeah, it's hard, man. Yeah, the energy was like when the energy is off and, and it was off for me, too. It's uh, mm -hmm. I attempted to like. <laughs> I it, it's crazy because right when I started a room in Sacramento before I moved here I started mm -hmm. a room and, and I like week three of that uh like weekly show the revolution started and then I was like and then it just kept getting you know it was kept getting bigger and bigger and I'm like all right I can't ignore this so then I I like I plastered uh Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. One of my favorite quotes. And mm -hmm. I, I put, I plastered that behind where the comics would be doing their sets. Like, so it was always visible. Mm -hmm. But then like, but then, yeah, like right, I had to rewrite or not rewrite. I had to write a lot of jokes that where, where, where I felt connected to. And it was always, it had to become like about Iran. So, and it was just like, <laughs> I was also going through a divorce and revolution and it was just like so many things on on top of each other so i'm just like mm -hmm. i'm just gonna make make fun of my like failures in marriage and tie it into comedy and that was like or tie it into iran and also like so i got a few like decent jokes out of it but yeah like then you're like okay i don't want to write anymore about this then then you're kind of i felt like pigeon held i'm like oh i'm stuck in this area like and i was trying to get out of it so um, it's good to you know that's really you know it can be therapeutic to write oh, about sure. that yeah. i remember actually last time i was in iran i left in january of 2020 i was in iran when they killed soleimani when trump killed soleimani and oh, then when the horrible shit. they shot down the civilian airliner i flew out two days after that and wow. i remember getting back into the u.s and saying okay oops, how can i it's my knee how can i write <laughs> Oh, you're um, going to get those comments coming now. You realize ooh, that. Sure get. How can I write about... How can you show one knee? Yeah. <laughs> no, I was like, how can I, you know, write about what happened? And, you know, the idea of being in Iran when we were in the brink of war and just seeing how scared everyone was and how upset everyone was. And right, like pretty much right when that happened, I mean, COVID happened and everything shut down. I'm like, nobody's going to remember this, so um but yeah it can, the world is, it can be yeah. therapeutic and again and that's also why again i've also in iran like just i love going to iran so much i i wouldn't even really write about it and i wouldn't there were even i had even told my manager at some point like just so you know i don't know if i really want to act in you know any role that's like anti-iranian government you know because i still go back and you know now it's <laughs> in a way it's freeing i guess but again, I have not done, I have not even, I don't even know if I've begun the br the grieving process yet of not being able to go back. And I know it sounds so privileged coming from someone 
here in America when so many Iranians are dying to leave and dying to change the mm. system and are stuck there. But it's still, you know, when you have so much family there, it's very, very difficult because it's also like you could meet them in another country, but it's not the easiest thing to, yeah. you know, get a visa to go to Turkey or Dubai. But, you know, another friend also you know, brought it up that like, listen, it could always be worse. Look at some of these other countries in the Middle East. They're getting carpet mommed. You know, imagine your fam. I mean, at least Iran, Iranians, for the most part, you know, who are not partaking in protests, you know, are living in peace. They're not, you know, being bombed there. Well, you know. Depending on what yeah. ethnic group they're part of. But, but yeah, yeah. But, but that's the thing, right? Like it's, mm -hmm. I, I find that our displacement over the last 44 years, right, mm -hmm. um, has been a pretty classy displacement. Like Iranians tend to go everywhere in the world and really integrate and, and kind of set themselves up and become a part of the fabric of where they are. But we are a displaced people. And I think that's what you're feeling is this idea that that is our home. I remember the first time I went to Iran, right, because I was born in Canada. I'd never really been before. I get there, the plane lands, I get out just the smell of the air seeing the mountains yeah. and it felt like home there's something about that it's it's ingrained in our genes right um mm -hmm. yeah no i don't think that that's i don't think it's it's entitled at all you know it's we we have been we've been robbed of our heritage and our home and iran is such a special place right look at all the colonial powers that have been trying to uh hang on to it for so many centuries iran is a very special place um, and, and we miss it. I know it's it's really hard. Every time I want to go, I need to worry about that, too. It's, it's crazy. Just the, Sorry. you know, yeah. the just I just remember, you know, just making that journey just well. OK, I will say this. Going to Iran is always like you're excited, but you're also nervous because yeah. they're so keen on taking dual nationals, especially American dual nationals for no reason and holding them for bargaining chips. And so, but like, once you get past the airport, then you're like, so excited, like that nice cigarette smell in the taxi with no seatbelts. And like, you're on the Amir Kabir highway and you're just driving past, it's in the middle of the night, you're driving past the mountains, you're driving past the lights of the city. Oh, that, that little plaza. Okay. Now we're this far away from grandmother's home. Oh, that specific mountain. Now we're this far away from grandma's home. Then you get there and it's grandma's home and it's 4 a.m. And you open the door, you go up the steps, your grandma's there, your aunts are there. Mm. Sometimes my cousins are there with their new baby just to say hi, mm. you sit around, eat ajil, talk about the trip, talk about politics. And then the first day, the first day, I would say I have maybe 27 members of my family. They all live in the same city. Um, and they, everyone comes over for, for lunch, big sofre across the, across the living room and and there's always someone new, whether it's yeah. a new spouse that my cousins have or whether it's a new cousin's baby. And you're always so excited to meet them and hug everyone and say hi to everyone. And I mean, give gifts to everyone. And it's it's almost a routine. And it's it's a really, really special thing that was devastating to give up. I will say that it's like I can't even talk about it without crying. Oh, yeah. 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 I hate my extended you, family, so it's okay for me. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I think it's the other way around. They hate you. Um the most likely. <laughs> most likely. Just kidding. Um the uh were you born in America? Yeah, so, I was born in Ohio. Born here. I was born in it's America. Funny. I didn't want to I didn't want to admit to people where you were born so I said America to keep it safe but you you outed yourself Ohio um but <laughs> oh, thank you. I was going to say I was going to say it's funny I'm hearing you guys talk about this and it's uh mm -hmm. it's it's interesting because um oh there's like a little thing on my cord hold on yeah um it I I have like the rever I have like the opposite experience cuz you both were born Mm -hmm. in Canada and in, in, in the US. I was born in Iran and I haven't been back since I was eight. So it's like, it's a it's a it's interesting, like it's it's cool to hear all these little stories, right? Like these little anecdotes you guys are sharing about the smell and like the sofre and like 
the whole city being your family in one town, 27, you said, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, that's amazing. Like I, I haven't been back <clears throat> and it's no secret why, you know, it's like, um, but it's, uh, I do want to go back. Obviously it's just, um, um, I don't want to go back with, with any like limitations, if that makes sense. You know, I want to go back and just be able to take it all in freely. And obviously we're, we're going to close, we're getting closer to that. Um, it's going to happen, but, um, yeah, almost 30 years, man. It's, uh, it's good to hear that, you know, there's all these, uh, beautiful stories that still come out of there, but speaking, mm -hmm. speaking of which, um, we talked about, you were talking about the hip hop community when, uh, like the hip hop artists are thrown in jail over there. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a forced segue by me, but it's, uh, <laughs> cause you did say it. We can't say you didn't say it. You did say it. I didn't, I didn't even make you say it. You said it. Uh, Mo, do you want to, do you want to share yeah, the news? So, I don't think, I don't think Sarah has heard yet. So this might be. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. And I think, I think this is one that's going to be important to you as well. Cause I know you and I have talked about this, uh, over mm -hmm. the last several months and last year when all of this was going down, um, too much Sadehi yeah. released today on bail. Did you hear that? I did hear that. I did. I posted it on my story just like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. So oh, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. That's right? one of the, yeah, that's, a, that's amazing. I'm so happy. Um, he went through immense torture this past year. Yeah. I mean. Over a year and some days, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was in yeah. solitary confinement for over, what, 250 some odd days. Uh, yeah, he's been in prison for, for over a year. Uh, yeah, he was in deteriorating mental health and physical health. Um, and he was released on bail. So he had to put up, uh, put up some funds, most likely, I'm sure, a deed or two. Mm -hmm. um, and he was released. They've already banned him from performing. They've already set a lot of, a lot of boundaries. Um, it sounds like he's coming out to get medical treatment, but hopefully... Uh, you know, he'll be able to stay out with, you know, with the yeah. bail that he, that he put in. Yeah. Man. You know, it's, and it's stuff like that kind of, you know, I mean, my mom will always check me on my privilege, not to say that my feelings about not being able to go back and see loved ones are, is invalid, but like, she's like, you know, you live here, you can still perform. What if you were too much? What if you were, yeah. they, you know, it's, so it's, it's, they make valid points, but it's hard. It's hard mm -hmm. to, like two truths can exist, you know, it's like, yeah. they, they can both, they can both be hard. I'm not, yeah. and you know, I'm not like most of these Persians in LA, at least I don't have all my cousins living down the street from me. I don't have mm. family get togethers. And like, I went to one cousin's wedding in Iran a few years ago when it was like a dream. Cause I don't get mm. that. I don't get to go to their wedding. I don't get to see my nieces and nephews grow up. You know, I, I feel I'm very close to my cousins cause we're always talking. We're in a group chat, but I, it's just a very, you know, and that, that's, that's another part of it. I've never felt, Oh man, I hope I don't get canceled for this, but I've never felt a hundred percent connected to the Iranian diaspora either. Because I do feel like we're we're very fractured diaspora, first of all. Mm -hmm. We all have such different backgrounds, different stories, but I don't know. I just, I, it's, it, there's a lot of Iranian Americans that have not had the privilege or the opportunity to go back, but also they have the privilege of having their loved ones here and going to high school with their cousin and, you know, just like, it's, it's different. It's yeah. and again, it, 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 it makes it very hard because even though it's nice to have each other for support, I sometimes feel like most of my Iranian friends don't get it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I hope right. I don't get like <laughs> ruined online for this, but you know, I am. No, I don't, no, I don't let me let me bring anything. this over to me. Yeah, let me bring this over to here. I'll take I'll take some heat away from you. I think we are an absolutely toxic community here in the diaspora um and you're absolutely uh i'm gonna i'm gonna even take it up a notch that yeah we we are our own worst enemies um i find that uh throughout my you know over 40 years of living here and trying to kind of have meaningful relationships with you know other people in the diaspora i found that it's always been it's always been a challenge you know we will you know, cut each other's, cut each other's ears. We will, um, 
you know, prefer non-Iranians to each other if if we feel like it's going to be a bit of an issue. Maybe that's a Canadian thing. I'm not sure. I've seen a lot of unity in LA. And whenever I go down there, I love the fact that the community is is really quite together. But we do have some toxic traits, I think. Um, I would say the LA Iranian community has gotten better about being mm -hmm. together. But again, because of the Masamini stuff, I it was really cool to see unity. I will say, though, again, I feel like a lot of them are bonded by having grown up in L.A. or having been mm -hmm. exiled or having parents that are political or religious exiles. So, again, a, a lot of the, the Persians in L.A., again, they don't go to Iran. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that, like, you have to go to Iran for me to be able to connect to you. But again, it's the yeah. kind of understanding, I guess, like, yeah, I have this, no. yeah, my friend the other day, he was like, no, oh, I mean, because he's also banned from Iran. He's um, he's an ra anti-regime rapper. And he's like, no, I think it's kind of cool to, like, be banned. And I'm like, cool. I, don't, I think I know I, who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I personally, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I don't know. I would give anything to go okay. back. I mean, I don't know. It's so crazy. Because, like, thinking of my grandmother's home, like, am I ever going to step foot in there again? Mm. Wild. Oh yeah, my god. Is, you're gonna you're is, gonna get I, the waterworks if we keep, you know. We will. We will, no. sir. We will right. go back. We will I we look. Yes. There, there is a the, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Yeah. This, oh, a hundred percent. You know, it's like a hammer. Say it takes yeah. 20 cracks to break something. This was exactly. maybe crack number 13. Exactly. Because yeah. you know, yeah. we've all seen it gets more and more intense. So, like, remember 2009, the Green Movement? They weren't saying Mag Bad Jomhuri Islami. They were saying, we want reform. And then mm -hmm. when I was in Iran in 2017, that's the first time people were saying Mag Bad Diktator. And then again, 2019, they mm -hmm. it was more intense than 2017. And then this past round, I mean, it lasted so long and there were so many more people. I mean, next time, yeah, you know? Yeah. So do you guys think the revolution is right now continuing um, in, in a different format than the I know obvious? There's, like, yeah, sorry. I know no, there's it's, a it's, lot it's, of there's a lot of civil unrest still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know people are still getting arrested um, for involvement last year. Um, I mean, they're taking extra measures. So I know when Armita Garavand was unalived mm -hmm. and. I think they, they, she was Kurdish as well, but I think they didn't allow her body to be buried in whatever city in Kurdistan she's from because they knew the Kurdish people would start protesting. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So they're, and you know, they're the, who is it? Uh, Mashal Academy, who's the, mm -hmm. the father of Muhammad Mehdi Karami. You know, yeah. he, he was arrested for, going to his son's funeral like visiting his son's grave they're like oh no you're creating uh you're creating what is it disobedient not disobedient yeah civil disobedience and yeah, yeah. so you just know they're that, from from just the standpoint of exhaustion i feel like to to constantly have to battle that from the regime mm -hmm. side Mm -hmm. Like they're going to want to like fuck off themselves. They're going to be like, okay, these guys are obviously, they don't want us here. And we mm -hmm. have to keep constantly like go to this place of like anger to get them mm -hmm. to behave, which, mm -hmm. which is what they believe as behaving. Um, and then I think just that alone is, is the end is near just from that aspect alone, in my opinion. But Mo, what mm -hmm. were you going to say? I think there will, there has to be, a, I mean, I think if we see more of more defection from the Basij and, you know, the IRGC, because there were a couple this time around, you know, and I'm sure more and more, you know, the older these generations get, and the more they die out. It's just very difficult because, again, Iran has so many military investments in Lebanon and, you know, Hamas, Hezbollah. Um, Yemeni factions, uh, Iraqi factions, uh, just all over the Middle East. Their military is worth 25 billion. That's, it's really just the money and the military investment that is a little discouraging. And the fact that Joe, you know, Biden just kind of, what, he like unfroze yeah. 10 billion. 17. Here's the he, thing, he but here's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, here, here's the thing that always kind of gets me is that, and we've talked about this before, Pej and I, right? Um, that 
when you take a look at the U.S., when you take a look at Iran, when you even take a look at Israel, when you take a look at Saudi, when you take a look at all these other countries in the region and, and even the U.K. and France and Germany, um, they seem to all be working towards the same goal in helping and propping up the, you know, the, the system, right, the economic system. And Iran plays a huge, huge part in that. And that's why, you know, when you when you kind of look back over the last few months, where we are today doesn't seem that strange of a stretch on how we got here. You know, you had Biden releasing funds, you have Iran um, masterminding and green lighting this uh, the offensive uh, on October 7th, then you have the fallout, um, you know, the the media fallout, because, again, this is an issue that's been going on for over 75 years, right, in Palestine. But it, it was, you know, it was absolutely exacerbated by the action on October 7th, which was completely orchestrated by Iran. And now the news cycle is completely moved away from them. And lo and behold, 10 days later, they finally announced that Army Tagirvan was was brain dead and 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 is gone. So it seems like you know one of the other things is they are working in coordination with a lot of other groups like you like the ones that you mentioned, but also the ones that we don't expect. Biden's talking about releasing more money to them. There was a uh, the um, was it the gasoline or uh, from Iraq? There's about ten billion that that they're looking to release over the next uh, over the next couple weeks as well to Iran again. Um, and you just don't know which side of their mouth people are talking out of because at the end of the day, and this is what I, this is usually when I turn to Pej and go, I need to put my tinfoil hat on, right? The conspiracy theories come out, but it, I a hundred percent believe that, you know, they're working together because guess what? Stock prices have never been higher for a lot of the, you know, the, 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 the military industrial complex and, and, and the organizations that are profiting off of conflict. Um, and you see a lot of these countries working in unison. You see France and Germany and England and the States and everyone kind of working together to perpetuate this violence. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. I you know, just, we're all just yeah. chess pieces in a sick game to them, you know, involving mm -hmm. oil and money and politics. And in the meantime, we just want to see our families. We just want to see yeah. our loved ones. It's a it's a rich man's war and uh, it's uh, it's a business. It's always been it's a distraction. It's a distraction for them to to continue to basically steal money from the the people. Um, anyway, what I was going to say is um, they're going to they're my hope lies in the fact that we we us the people we now have the ability and we're not we don't always get it right but we have the ability to to share information. Sometimes that information needs to be fact checked a few times, but we can we have the ability to get to the truth to the reality of the situation to get to the truth. And I think that is the ultimate power to to combat these evils that are, you know, in charge. Um, yeah, and, social and media, I would say definitely does help with, you know, mm -hmm. any real time tragedy now. Um, I mean, of course, mm -hmm. like you said, they need to be fact checked, sometimes propaganda mm -hmm. now with AI, but, mm -hmm. you know, that can definitely skew things. But, you know, it's, I don't it's believe... a hell of a lot. Yeah, it's a hell of a lot easier to to figure out where the bullshit lies and where, you know, where mm -hmm. where the reality is. And 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 that gives me optimism that, you know, we're eventually we're getting closer to taking the power back. I've been telling Mo for for months now that uh I, i'm predicting a world revolution is going to ensue like the iran revolution was like the step one and then afghanistan followed through and then i think it's going to start to happen between the people Be people are starting to realize they're not the bad guys the people are starting to realize like all the bullshit that's been fed to us that has been indoctrinating uh generations is starting to be unlearned we're starting to unlearn all that that's where we are right now as a society we're unlearning a lot of the lies and we're starting to learn the truth and 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 there are multiple truths and that's part of it and that's part of the uh the situation that is uh causing it to take a little bit longer because we have to figure all of this out when iran went into this revolution initially all of us thought okay awesome the people are going to free iran 
Well, obviously it wasn't that simple, right? It's it's now we're starting to realize, oh, this is this is a a world problem. This is not just Iran. This is a situation where now we're exposing the UN, we're exposing the FIFA, we're exposing uh the US government, we're exposing the Canadian Parliament, we're exposing the EU. Like everybody start we're starting to see how many of these heads of snakes are have been working together behind the scenes. And they're not smart enough to to get in front of it, right? Because the the social media is in the hands of like millennials and 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 Gen Zs and and you know like the older generations who are who are in power, they don't they don't know how to how to be like oh shit we gotta fix uh, we gotta control the algorithm so this doesn't they don't know any of that, right? It's like so it's our race to win, right? It's our race to 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 get there, and and I think what's missing right now is that world realization that oh shit the only thing keeping us from attaining world you know peace real peace in iran and other parts of the world is us it's just us being able to go hand in hand uh i don't care where you're from if you want love and peace that's the answer we just all hold hands and we march i swear to god if we get 25 percent of the world to march it's over it's a wrap like these 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 governments will tuck their tails so quick they don't have like they don't have any chance and and i believe this with my all of my heart 20 not even 25 20 percent 15 percent of the population of the world marching the streets uh, an orchestrated effort and just say listen we only want love we have no problems with the people of ukraine we don't have any problems with the people of russia we don't have any problems with palestinian people we don't have any problems with israeli people we don't have any problems with iranian people and you just do that over and over i I'm telling you, it's going to happen. It's, it's just, and that to me is World War III, is, is, is the people against their corrupted governments. That's, that's the next, that's where we're headed. And, and, and that's my uh, minute of going off. Okay, back to what we You got saying. my Sorry, vote, man. You got, you got my vote, brother. No, absolutely. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We, have to, I think, we have to vote. I love it. No, yeah. no, we don't. No, but no, absolutely. I think Iran was the first domino in, in, a, in a chain of events that's going to be felt around yeah. the world. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's yeah. the case. Um, yeah. And I think what's happening now, and particularly with you know the events over the last month and a half, are people are realizing that so many of those long-held beliefs that they had are absolutely incorrect. They, they've and and a lot of eyes are opening, um, and we're seeing it on social media. I this is actually I think uh, maybe this will be a more natural segue than the one you attempted a little bit earlier, Pesh. Um, we're talking about social media and the algorithms and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I, 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 Elon Musk yesterday announced that you remember when he bought Twitter and then. Um, renamed it to X, which I still don't understand why he did that. Sure, name your kids after letters and numbers, but why are you renaming Twitter? Um, And that went really well for him. Uh, But he came out with this announcement last night saying that that there are certain phrases and words that he's essentially going to start censoring on on X. Um, And they're very much related to uh, you know, the, the conflict right now, or the crisis, I should say, rather, in, in Palestine um, and everything that's going on there. But he's he's now stepping up the censorship and they're being very open about it, that we are going to start blocking people and kicking people off the platform if they use, I think it was from the river to the sea and free Palestine or any, if you use any of these, you're gone off the platform. Um, and it, and it's um, that Oh, sorry. I was going to just say, like, in my last roast battle in my title defense, I have a from the river to the sea joke because you do. Um, yeah. Did you see it? I was there. No, I, I, don't, I saw it. It's on, it's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm like debating about posting the reel because maybe not. I don't know. But like <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Nesson, very talented battler. But he was like, um, <laughs> he was like, everyone give it up for Hamas, the tank engine. And I was like, speaking of Hamas, when they chant from the river to the sea, because I knew he was going to have a Hamas joke. They're really just talking about the distance between Ryan's eyes. <laughs> his eyes like, you know, if you might say. We're going to post this picture. Just... We're going to post this picture right here as posts just to make the joke make more sense for people. Ryan's who don't a know. good guy. He's very talented. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He deserves it. We love you, Ryan. We love you, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs>
Apparently, <laughs> apparently you funny looking, Ryan, but but other than that, no, he's actually he's very <laughs> oh, good looking. He's very no, good I'm looking. joking. He's very good looking. He's very good looking. There you go. There you um go. dude, yeah. So but so speaking of but Twitter is basically canceling itself slowly. Um mm -hmm. but um Don't you mean X? Blue, yeah, Isn't it X worth like a spot. quarter of the value that it, of when he bought it? It was just uh, a little while ago they there announced. Yeah, yeah, it's tanking. A lot of people are leaving Twitter and they're going to Blue Sky. I haven't done it yet, but who, who's heard about this? Blue Sky. I've not is heard of it. I yeah, went. So I tried an... to create a thread and it wouldn't let me. So really, your Instagram Twitter, won't I let think... you make a thread. It's so stupid. I don't get it. I don't know. I, I should try again. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah. I'm I'm not ashamed to admit. I don't. I still don't really think I've grasped threads yet. I I don't know what it is, but I really yeah. don't understand it. It's Instagram's version of of Twitter, basically. Of Twitter. So yeah, I know, but yeah. but I really don't understand why. What What do you mean? Like they want you to not be getting off the Instagram app to go to, to that app, so they just keep you all. They They actually the way it works, as far as I, my understanding, is when you click your 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 thread username is right under your instagram page yeah, yeah. Right? it's it's added it's added automatically so you just you can literally just click that and you just go to the thread app what i don't understand is why do you have two apps for the same app yeah just just put them together which is you know that's a fuckerberg being an idiot but uh um, and then you can uh, share certain no but then you can share certain stories on instagram but you can't share certain stories as you have to only share them on threads and then and then, like, there's these weird rules behind it too. I saw just, that too. Yeah. Or is that just a shadow no, I agree ban with that you I have? On that. I'm pretty sure I'm heavily shadow banned on on all platforms at this point. But me too. No, it's it's I I've struggled with that too. I was trying to share a uh, a story on. I was oh I couldn't share it on my IG story, but I could share yeah. it on my thread. Yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't I didn't yeah. understand that. Anyways, yeah. I don't know. So anyway, that's thread. So blue sky is another one. Uh, comment and let us know if you have it and what you think of it. Um, by the way, subscribe to our channel. We're so good at plugging our own uh, podcast. <laughs> Please subscribe. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have a whole background now. It's like we put a lot of money into this. Um, but and it was yeah, a total so, of five minutes, actually. Five, yeah, I watched it. I was there. <laughs> I saw you make this. Um, uh, we should probably, for future, offer it to our guests so they can also have the background. But you know, now yeah. now we're learning. Yeah. Yes. But your background is great. I've I've been in the in on that couch that Sarah's sitting on. So um thanks for letting me stay when I was homeless. Of course. I appreciate Anytime. it. Anytime. Um, Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, Sarah, what are your thoughts on should we should we go into the final topic here? Sure. Uh maybe Sarah is um Sarah, I don't know how big you are into uh comics. Uh not comedy, but the other one. Um Disney Marvel Woes. Ooh, I'm about. honestly not really into it at all. <laughs> I mean, I used to be more. I, I've kind of dipped out a little bit, but but I Mo is super it, into it. I don't know if it is or isn't a pick me thing to say, but I have no interest in Mar like I don't really. I'm not really in the superhero world. Like, okay, I know Spider Man, I know Batman, I know Superman. When I mean, I know all the the like famous ones, but yeah, I yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I honestly couldn't tell you anything about any no anything. that's fine <laughs> i'm kind of i'm more in your park than i am in uh like mm -hmm. mo's park because yeah, I'm a dork. i used to... i'm an absolute dork that is what he's no, trying no, to get no, no, no. that's not what i was saying i was just saying you you have a lot of time on your hands is what i'm saying um <laughs> but D disney disney marvel woes why so mo you you selected that title for this next topic so i want to just hear why you're calling it woes Oh no! Well, yeah, they they are they are not doing great. They are not doing very well. They've got some movies uh, that are going to be coming out next year that they were really banking on, but with the, for lack of a better term, you, the Marvels tanked last weekend, um, and it's still not doing very well. And they're really questioning a lot of their releases. They've moved a couple up um for that reason but with deadpool coming out there's inside out 2 coming out um mufasa the lion king um that one's coming out so i think it's like a prequel it's it's like the story of mufasa yeah. becoming the lion king so here's uh, another was... thing too i like don't care about disney remakes and i mean if you uh, 
<laughs> like, I mean, what do you mean? Like you hate, like, you don't like them or you don't mind what, that they do them? What do you mean by I that? I mean, I don't, I don't care, but it's not like, like, I'm a very, like, I'm not a kid. Like if I, if I'm going to watch a cartoon, it's got to be like family guy. It's got to be adult right. jokes. Like, I don't know. I'm just never, I'm not like, I don't get Disney adults. I don't really, I don't know. Doesn't Disney, no, no, but doesn't Disney own family guy now? Didn't they, they, they purchased. I thought I they know. did. I don't know. I thought they did. I thought they did. Um, of course, all these companies are owned by each other, right? They're quite incestuous, actually, when you take yeah. a look at it. But, um, but yeah. So yeah, so there was all of that. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying I shouldn't say it like that because I don't mind getting cast in any of that stuff. But like, uh, <laughs> Pej left. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he did. I think he froze. He's gonna have to he'll, he'll come back. No, but it's um. So yeah, while I we just... don't have Pesh here, actually, this is a really good, this is really good. So he's, he's not here right now. So I, I'm going to ask you this question. So I've kind of been thinking that we need to replace Pesh on this podcast. I need someone a little bit more of quality character to, to come on. What are you, what are you doing in the next few weeks? Are you, uh, are you... <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I mean, yeah. He's going to, th I was hoping he'd come back as I was mid sentence uh, talking about that, but unfortunately. <laughs> No, you, you two are great. I'm actually, I'm going the next, I'll be out of town next week. I'll be visiting family for Thanksgiving. And then uh, I've got a few end of the year dates. I have one. Well, I can't plug tonight because it's not going to be out. But like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, do you know when this episode's going to be out? So this episode will be out next Sunday. So oh. it'll be out uh, on the 20, well, 27th, basically. Okay, well, the 28th, I'm doing Bourbon Room in Hollywood at 9 p.m. Uh, mm -hmm. Called It's a show called Am I the Asshole? And there's going to be a panel of celebrity judges, including Brittany Furlan and Jason Nash. Um, ow. Sorry. You okay? Coffee. Yeah, coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Just fucked up my stomach. Um, oh, no. And then I'm double headlining on December 1st, uh, 8 p.m., Deaf Noodles Comedy Club. And then 9.30 p.m., the Hollywood Comedy. They're both in West Hollywood. And then, um, yeah. Nice. Right. And we definitely, what we're going to do is we'll make sure that we have all your handles up. Um, I'll put yeah. those all into the screen. Um, we'll definitely share those out. I just got word from Pej on on the app here, letting me know that his mm -hmm. power went out. So yeah, he, same. Is, uh, he is without electricity. Oh, your power went out too? No, no. He just texted me. Oh, okay. He just texted yeah. you. I was like, okay, well, that, that's, uh, that's good. No, yeah, no, absolutely. We will, uh, we will do that. Um, and you know, and everybody who is, who is listening, if you don't already, uh, follow Sarah, um, check her mm -hmm. out. Absolutely. I, I was not kidding at, uh, at the top of the, uh, at the top of the episode, um, love watching you love what it is that you do love, um, the absolute, um, just the just the cheekiness and and just the absolute brilliance of what it is that you do and and this may sound maybe it's because I'm older um, but it is incredible to you know everything that we've seen with with Iran over the last four decades and and kind of growing up here to see an incredibly talented um, female comedian from Iran an Iranian comedian doing what you do and doing it so well. Um, you make us proud and we absolutely Thank love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thanks, of Pej. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. And, mm -hmm. and, or Mo, or Mo even, but, but that's okay. I mean, Mo, <laughs> sorry, Mo, sorry. Okay, that's sorry. A, I know, I know. Sorry. That's Weed right. brain. That's a, no, he's, he's, he's better looking. So I, I, I appreciated no. that. That was excellent. Thank so you. So he's saying that. that was perfect. <laughs> I love you too. I love, I love you too. You. Uh,